right, friends, happy Friday. My name is Lori Richmond. I am a children's author, illustrator, and an artist, and I'm so happy that you're here to draw with me today. So the subject for today's drawing, the inspiration, is this painting that I did for my View From My Run series. Um, this one is actually a reproduction of the original painting, but um, this is a painting I did of a little townhouse, a brick um, townhouse in um, an area of Brooklyn called Brooklyn Heights that's near where I live and I love to run. Um, and I love drawing buildings and I love drawing um, the city around me. So I thought that a street scene um, inspired by these buildings would be a great subject um, for today. So let's do a materials check. Um, I am gonna be drawing with my snazzy Sharpie markers again, just a plain old regular Sharpie. Um, for color, I'm gonna be using these paints. These are some Japanese watercolors that I have. Look at those pretty, pretty rectangles. Um, what's cool about these is that they come in these little um, removable kind of plastic boxes. So you can actually take, you know, your favorite colors and put together a smaller palette. Like if you're working, um, you know, outside of home, which is really nice. And then I've got my round brush. Brushes come in all different um, shapes and sizes, but I'm gonna use this one today. And of course, since I'm using watercolor, I have my water to activate the paint. And um, I took an extra piece of paper here today that I might use as a palette. Um, I'm not really sure. You know, you guys know sometimes I use the bottom of my page as a palette. I might use the paper today. I don't know. We'll see. Um, okay, I'm in a little bit of a different setup. Um, I'm in, actually in my kid's bedroom. I'm, bother, I'm bo uh, borrowing <laughs> their room today. Um, so thank you to them. Uh, so I'm going to move over to this side here so we can get started. I'm going to pull over my easel and so since we're going to be doing a street scene that tends to be horizontal right usually we've been drawing in a vertical format i'm going to suggest that you turn your paper horizontal but if you don't want to that's fine too because it's your piece but this is what i'm going to do and if you want to follow along feel free to move it horizontally so when we draw, most of the time, the things that we're drawing, it's a series of shapes that we're putting together like a puzzle. So today to draw our street scene, most of the shapes that we're gonna draw are rectangles of different sizes and putting them together in different ways. And you'll see how just one shape at a different scale, using big ones and small ones and kind of putting them together, you can make an entire drawing just with one shape or you know maybe a couple others. Um, so here we go, we're gonna get started. And I'm gonna start by drawing just a three sides of a rectangle, not the whole thing yet. So we're gonna go down like this, over and down. And you'll see why we're only drawing the three sides first a little bit later on. So this is kind of like a partial rectangle. I had um, some smaller rectangles that we're going to use for the windows. And I'm going to do four across. You can do three, you can do two, whatever you want to design for your building. So you'll see I'm going to make four little rectangles like that, which are going to be the start of my windows. See that? And then I'm just going to make another row of those. like that. And then you know what, I'm going to make a third row. I'm going to make another row of four. One, two, three, and four. And so one of the things that's really cool about these buildings um, where I live is they have all these little details on them. See like these shapes above the windows and you know these curves above the door. We're going to take some inspiration in that and we're going to put some little details on these windows. So I really like that, I don't know what any of these architectural things are called, but I'm sure they have fancy names. But this thing that kind of sits over the window, like a ledge of some kind, I'm gonna draw that above my first row of windows. You can kind of see how I added it there. So you can go ahead and add some detail on the top of those windows. And you can just go along every row that you made and add some to the top. And then I'm gonna take a line and add a little ledge to the bottom 
of these windows. See how I added that line there? It gives that just a bit more detail. So go ahead and do that to the rest of your windows also. And so now really all we've made are straight lines and we could have just left those plain rectangles, right? That would have been perfectly fine. But just adding those little details makes it so much more special and like feels more finished in some way. All right, so now we're not gonna climb in the window to get in this building, right? We're gonna need a door. So I'm going to put a door here that is a rectangle about that size. I'm gonna make it bigger than the windows. And I'll put a little doorknob, right? Because we need a doorknob to get in the door. And then I'm gonna use rectangles here also to just add some decoration to the door. Kind of made a little, a little panel on the door like that. And then I'm gonna make some more windows right next to the door maybe that's the ground floor I imagine maybe there'd be like a nice reading chair or something there so one of the features that is on a lot of these buildings near where I live is there's a little staircase in front of the door the door is kind of like higher than the sidewalk where you would walk um, so we're gonna add a little staircase in front of that door and we're gonna do it in a really simple way so I'm gonna just make some lines that get gradually longer I'm gonna put that close so you can see. See how I did that? It's just four straight lines and each one is a little bit longer than the last. And then I'm gonna connect them with two lines on the side like that. And that's gonna give us kind of like a little bit of a staircase. Looking good so far. So the other thing that I really love about um, the buildings where I live is on the top, right above the roof, kind of, or where the roof begins, there's usually some kind of decoration there. Again, that probably has a fancy architectural term that I don't know. Um, but we're gonna kind of decorate the top of this building. And usually there is something shaped kind of like this, where it has a, an angle on the side and there's kind of different um, levels to it. So the way that we're gonna add it to our building is just by putting another rectangle like a skinny rectangle on top of our building. And then we're gonna make another one on top of that. Maybe it's the same size, maybe it's a little smaller, maybe it's a little bigger, you see that? And then I'm gonna draw an angled line this way and an angled line that way. See how it's kinda, of, almost looks like the building has antennas right now. And then we're gonna connect those two lines with a longer line. And that's going to be the detail for the top of our little building there. See how we're, see how we're building that out? Um, another thing that is usually on the front of these buildings is like a fence of some kind. So what I'll do is I'll draw a line, a horizontal line, kind of right below that last row of windows there. And then I'm going to put some straight up and down lines like that and fill that in to make a little fence. And you see how our stairs will kind of like go up through the fence so we can, we can go in the house. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna draw two more buildings very similar to how I did this one. Um, but we're not gonna make them all the same size. We're gonna make them small, we're gonna make another one larger because that kind of up and down um, in the size is what really kind of gives the neighborhood its character because not all the buildings are the same. So this one I'm gonna make it a little smaller and a little wider than the one that we just made. So I just kind of drew an upside down L, right? Because the other side of the building we've already drawn because it's kind of touching this building. And I'm gonna make rows of rectangles just like I did in the last building and that's how I'm gonna start um, with my windows. So again, you can do another set of four, you can do three, it's totally up to you. So I'm gonna add in some more of my rectangle windows here. I think I'm going to do another row of four, like that. Maybe I'll do two rows of four. And the same thing, I'm going to add a little ledge detail where I put a little line kind of on the bottom of those windows just to give it like a little bit of ledge. And now to decorate the top of these windows, I think I'm going to do a half circle. I'm going to take a circle, just cut it in half and then stick it on the top of the window. So kind of like this. 
I'll do one row and then I'll show you. So kind of like that. See those little half circles on there? So I'm gonna do that on all the windows that I made on this building. This building's gonna have a different design. I should probably learn more about architecture and how these buildings were designed and what all these things are called. Um, Cause it's really beautiful if you actually take the time to stop and look at them. Really, really nice. So now here I'm gonna add a door again. So I'm gonna make a rectangle similar to my other door with a little doorknob and then I'll make a little kind of design on this door also, similar to the one I made next door. Maybe they're neighbors, right? Maybe they're helpful neighbors. I'm gonna make another staircase just like I did in the last building where I made those lines that got a, gradually longer and then I connected them on the side with two angled lines like that. See, all we're drawing is straight lines. We have, we've barely made a curve and look at already, you know, what we've made. You can already kind of get a great feel of what this neighborhood might look like. All right, so I'm gonna add a fence here too. Oh, my fence went a little crooked, but that's okay. I'm just gonna keep going. And then this, this space looks kind of empty, right? So I'm gonna put some more windows there. I'll make them line up with the windows right above it. And now we'll add something to the top of this building too. I'm gonna make some more rectangles here, a similar, similar kind of shape. And then another thing that you see sometimes on these decorative um, tops of the buildings are like, there's like little rectangles that kind of come out from the top. I'll do a few so you can see, kind of like that. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna continue that all the way across. It almost looks like it's um, like a support or something that's holding up this ledge, but it's, it's decoration. Um, and again, it just adds to the little details and the character of each building. So look at that, we've got two so far. We're gonna add one more. And now I'm gonna make this one the tallest one. Maybe it'll be a little narrower than the one that we just made. So you can make your, your third building smaller, you can make it the same size as mine, whatever you want, but I suggest making it a different size than what we've already drawn because that'll kind of give it that nice up and down. And then we'll go ahead and we'll add some windows. This time I'm gonna do rows of three across. And we're gonna go back and we're gonna add details. So if you guys are like really fast and already adding these windows, you can go ahead and go back and then add in the little details on those windows. So I'm gonna do my details a little bit differently on this one. I'm actually gonna make the ledge its own rectangle and kind of sticking out from the bottom of the window. You see that? It's just slightly different than we did on these other ones. We're kind of here, it kind of sticks out. So that's how I'm gonna decorate my windows with these little ledges. And I bet you like a bird would love to sit on a little ledge like that. Maybe, maybe somebody who lives in this building would put out a bird feeder or something and attract the birds to come sit on the ledge. That would be fun. I think Mona would like that. Oh, Mona's in the other room, by the way. She's not gonna make, a, make an appearance today, I'm sorry to say, but maybe next week. So here I'm just adding some details to the top of the windows like I did in the other, um, in the other buildings. And now I'm gonna do kind of my decorative, my decorative top here. This one, I think I'm gonna do a scallop. That's what's called a scallop. So it's a bunch of half circles, just one after the other. And so that would kind of look like this that just half circles next to each other and then I'll finish it out with some angles and rectangles kind of like we did on these other ones just so that looks the same see all these little details really really makes the difference and so now I'm, I'm gonna add the door here but I put these two doors on the left side I'm gonna go crazy and I'm gonna put the door on the right on this one Woo, crazy cuz it's Friday okay so I'm gonna make another rectangle for this door Maybe the top of this door will have one of those half circles instead of the angles like I did on this one. I'll add the little doorknob so we can actually open this door. And I'll decorate it with some rectangles like that. And then I'll add the stairs. Right now we're like experts at making those little, those little staircases with just some simple lines, right? 
and then add the fence which we're also experts now. We've done it three times. I think we can call ourselves experts after just doing it three times, don't you? And we'll fill in that blank space with another window. And so now we've got our little row of three houses. How cute is that? Love it, love it. So now remember how we didn't draw the bottom of the rectangle last time? The reason that we did that was because I wanted to leave space for those stairs and then we can add our, that horizon line now. So we'll add at the bottom of the buildings here. We're gonna just kind of make one line that breaks, um, that skips over the stairs, it kind of breaks up over there. And that's the area where our buildings are, are sitting on. So now since we've drawn all this, like I'm feeling super hungry. So I think we should make a little hot dog cart right next to our buildings. Don't you think that'd be a good idea? Yes. Okay. So again, we're gonna stick with this rectangle theme. I'm gonna start out my hot dog cart by making a rectangle that's like that, kind of like a horizontal rectangle. I'll put one little wheel here, one bigger wheel there. Can you guys see that? And now it's summertime, it's hot outside, we need an umbrella on this hot dog cart. So again, we're gonna take another half circle, take a circle, cut it in half, and that's the shape we're gonna use for the umbrella. And I made it like tilt, tilt it a little bit. And then I'll, I'll add some lines here where maybe, you know, we have the different colors on the umbrella. And then we need a stand for our umbrella so it's not just floating there in the air. So we have that really simple little hot dog heart shape. And now um, I'm gonna draw a little hot dog on the front of the cart. So I'll make the bun first. It kind of looks like the same shape as a bean, but you stretch it out a little bit. So that's kind of one side of the bun. And then I'm gonna add in the hot dog, which is just following that same shape you just drew, like that. And then the other side of the bun is the same thing. We're just gonna follow the same shapes that we just drew. And so we kind of have the bun, the hot dog in the middle and the other side of the bun. And so since there's a hot dog, I think it would be fun if a cat would work at the hot dog cart, right? And well, who's our favorite cat? Mona. So I'm gonna draw a little kitty cat here. I'm gonna make a little kind of oval for her head and put in little triangles for her ears. And I'll make her little whiskers. So you can see I'll make her tail coming out of the back. So there you can see Mona working at the hot dog cart, right? Mona's gotta get a summer job because all these toys that we're buying for her, they're, they're not free. So she's gotta, she's gotta earn some of her own cash. So here I'm gonna extend that line that I made for the bottom of the buildings to go behind my cart. So it looks like my cart is kind of on the same street as my buildings. And then for the final thing, I'm gonna take one more line and put it here. That's gonna kind of be the rest of the sidewalk right because we'll have our this is where like cars would drive and this is where people would walk so then we're going to kind of make these little diagonal lines that kind of mimics what the the sidewalk looks like cool so now we have a street scene that we are loving with all these fun little details um oh actually one more thing that i want to add before we go to color is some greenery some trees right one really nice thing about brooklyn heights i tried to capture in this painting is there's like trees in the neighborhood that you kind of see these little spots of green all around. So um, you don't have to draw something with super, super, a lot of detail. You can just infer or use um, just small little shapes to give the idea that something is there. It doesn't have to have all the detail. So that's kind of what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna add in some curving shapes over here that kind of looks like they would be like bushes or trees, right? But I'm not drawing the whole thing. I'm just gonna kind of put the, the shapes in there a little bit. And you'll see with the color, when we add the color, how that will then look like there's trees and stuff back there. All right, great. So now we're going to get our color. I'm gonna be using watercolor. Um, I know a lot of friends use markers and colored pencil. That's awesome too. So whatever you have at home that you wanna use, feel free and get those materials ready. So the color for the bricks on the buildings where I live, a lot of them are like different types of browns or different types of reds. So that's how I'm gonna paint mine today. 
But if you want to make your buildings rainbow, if you want to make them yellow and bright pink, just go crazy. So choose a color for each building and go ahead and start laying that color in there. And so you can um, work kind of around the windows if you want. You could fill in the color around the windows and then we'll put different color in the windows when we get to that part. You can go ahead and just fill in that color. Oops, here I am using the, the watercolor again with my pad tilted up. I get a little bit of drips here, but we'll see if we can work around it. So I would just go in, fill in that building around those windows like that. And I'll show you in a little bit how I make it looks like there's bricks on there. That's just like a fun little, a fun little trick. All right, so this next building, I'm probably gonna add a little more of like a red tone. So I'm mixing up on my palette here, like a reddish brick tone that I'm gonna put in there. And again, I'm just gonna work around the windows as best as I can. If you get some color on there, no big deal. No big deal, because if it's too perfect, it's boring. You wanna have those little um, happy accidents, as Bob Ross would say. And that's what's so great about watercolor is that it never looks you know, even or perfect. You get kind of all those uneven brush strokes and some spots look darker, some spots look lighter, but that's what I really love about it. So don't worry about perfection here. You just wanna kinda of get, get the feel of what this little town that we're making would look like. There we go, and then for my last building, I'm not sure, maybe I'll kind of make it more of like a yellowish brown. Let's see. We don't wanna make it like a poopy brown, because that would not be good, right? But we'll see what kind of brown I can mix over here that's like a warmer tone. And hopefully it won't look too poopy. Sometimes when you mix colors, things can go awry. But again, then you just remix it, you paint over it, or you just keep going and you make it work. That's like what we've all been doing, right? The past couple months, we're just making it work. It's the same thing when you're making your art. So everybody's now filling in their final building or whatever building you're up to with all that color. Looking, looking good. See, so much personality already with just these three buildings. So now we're gonna find a green, some nice greens, and we're gonna fill in that area where I said it was gonna look like there were some trees. I just want you to go ahead and fill in that area with some green. And you don't have to use the same green throughout the whole thing. You can mix different types of green. See here I have a light green and kind of like a bluish green and when you mix up the greens that's really what it looks like in real in real life right like every tree is not the exact same green color and every leaf is not the exact same green color so I like that effect that you get when you mix up the greens I think that looks really nice and so with watercolor that's really easy to do um, with markers it's the same thing if you're using markers just kind of color some areas with one green and leave the others blank and then you can go back in with your other green and you can fill it in in those blank spots and that'll also give you a kind of nice mix as well look at that see how it really just comes to life i love that this is like my favorite part when you really start laying out all the color looks good all right, let's see, what are we gonna do next? Now I'm gonna do the sidewalk. So the sidewalk could be like a gray or a brownish gray. Um, so any kind of color that kind of resembles that. But again, too, remember I keep saying, if you wanna make it pink, make it pink. If you wanna make it blue, make it blue. I'm going for like a realistic palette in my piece today. So that's why I'm painting it this way, but you can do it however you want because this is your town. This is your little street that you're making. You can even like name the street after yourself. Maybe mine is Lori Lane. 
That would be cool if there was a street named after me. All right, there we go. So I've got my sidewalk in there. And now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna add the sky. I'm gonna find a nice blue in my palette here for a sky. And I'm gonna add that all in the top. And you know, here's a, here's a little trick that um, if you wanna make a, a sky that has some clouds in it, as you're painting your blue, you just wanna like leave some spaces white because you can't really draw with the white over the color. I mean, there's some materials that you can get that would allow you to do that, but this is like a cool way to give yourself some, some clouds is just leave um, a white space where you're painting with the blue. Just go around it and then you'll kind of have an instant cloud. It's like a magic trick. So I'm just gonna go around. Wow, we're getting like super advanced today, you guys. This is, a, this is like a real advanced piece we're making here. But you guys are doing awesome. I can't wait to see everybody's town. All right, it's Friday, we got some extra time. My kids finally finished school today, thank goodness. They never come to my art class, by the way. Um, maybe you guys could convince them that they should come, but they never come, whatever. All right, here we go. So we got the sky in there and then I've created kind of some clouds by leaving a blank space. Look at that. And now we'll do our hot dog cart. So I want you to go ahead and just make the hot dog cart whatever colors you want. Make it fun, make it your favorite colors, make it Mona's favorite colors, whatever you would want your cart to look like. Go ahead and start filling in those details on our cart because we're almost done guys. We are almost done with this awesome cart. Look at that. I've got like a whole scene here. So let me see, maybe I'll make my cart yellow. That would be fun. If I had a hot dog cart for real, I think I would paint it yellow. It's yellow such a happy color, especially in summer, right? And then I'm gonna make, put the wheels on my truck here. My truck, my cart, my hot dog cart. I'm thinking of Mona's ice cream truck that we did in another class. I'm getting all confused. All right, here we go. Now I'm gonna paint Mona in gray. There we go. Mona's all painted in. So the only thing we have left is our details in our windows and in our doors. So for the windows, I usually like to use a blue color, like a dark blue. Um, or a light blue, any kind of like blue shade. So you can go ahead and then just put a little bit of blue in your windows. And it doesn't have to be dark because we're just kind of giving the little bit of hint that there's some glass on those windows by putting just a little touch of blue on all of them. You see, I'm not, I'm not being, being very precious here. I'm just doing it nice and quick it on there like that and then we want to add the details that we drew these kind of decorative things on the top of the buildings and the doors so I'm gonna do those in maybe I'll do a darker shade of that kind of brown that I did earlier so I'm gonna go ahead and just lay that in on these top areas so it stands out from the rest of my building. This is kind of a different color from the rest of the building. And then I'm gonna add that same color to the doors. Here we go. We have lots of time uh, on color today, guys. I'm really loving this. This is the part where like, I, I can't tell time anymore. I don't know how long we've been painting. That's called when you get into the flow, the artistic flow, where kind of everything around you just disappears and you don't listen to anyone. You can't like hear sounds around you because your, your brain is just totally in the, in the artwork. I love that. And then we're gonna carry the same color and then I'm just gonna do it on some of these details on the buildings like that. Whatever you want, you can add those on. Nice and quick, like that. And then if you want to, I'm not gonna do this for the whole 
drawing, but I do want to show you how I make bricks. Um, so what I do when I make bricks is if I have a building that I've painted in a whole in a light color like that, see kind of that lightish red, I take a little bit of a darker version of that color and I put it on my brush and then I just kind of touch the building and make these little rectangles. They're not even rectangles, they're more like blobs. I take that back, they're more like blobs. And I just go along the building like that in an alternating pattern. So you can see a better example here where I just kind of touch them, touch the side of the building with those little blobs and it's, and it's kind of uneven in color and I don't even color the whole building. Um, and that's a really cute trick to give yourself little bricks on the building to kind of give that give that facade if that's something that you you know that you want to design on yours so all right the last thing I'm gonna add a little bit more to the street here I'm gonna add like this grayish blue maybe with a little black that looks a little too blue to me for my street color here and again, I always leave the uneven edges just because that's the style that I like, but you can do whatever style you want. Cool. Awesome. I think I'm calling this one done. I'm calling it done. So let's see. I'll bring it closer so you guys can see how this turned out. Look at that. We've got Mona in the hot dog cart and we've got all our little buildings and all our trees back there. Good work, guys. We did a lot of painting today, a lot of color, a lot of detail, um, but I'm feeling good about it. I feel like I really kind of recharged my week doing all this drawing today. Um, I'm so happy you joined, and thank you again for drawing with me. And please, please send me your artwork. I would love to see how they turned out. You can DM me or just tag me at Laurie Richmond Draws, and I would love to see them. So please send them to me, please, please, please. All right, well, thanks so much, guys. Have a great weekend and happy drawing. Bye.